Facebook. Uh, hey, welcome to Burning the Set List. Uh, that's Ryan, that's Carson, that's Governor. I'm Compton. Uh, hey, how you doing? We're, we're kind of doing that, that on here. And uh, while the boys are sharing things. Uh, yeah, 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 good, 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 good. So there you go, we're in Mobile. Uh, welcome to it. Uh, middle of uh, Mobile. How did Chris Catan say? Mobile. <laughs> Mobile. Oh <my> God. <laughs> That's real good timing. Oh, man. All right. Well, here you go. This is the first time we've used this particular setup in a hot minute. Uh, so we had to make sure all the buttons and everything work. And, uh, and it looks like they did. We only had to make one trip to the store. And uh, it's nice and loud on Facebook. I just turned that up in my ears. It nearly blew my eardrum off. Hell yeah. Uh, they so, can turn it down. There you go. Uh, I, think, uh, I think we turned the AC off just in time to lose everybody. That was a beautiful maneuver Carson just made right across the, uh, the couch there. Yeah, he's an adult dude. I'm watching like 15 seconds ago. Uh, so <laughs> this, this is wonderful. Um, yeah, so here we are. We're in Mobile. We're hanging out. Uh, Governor and I are doing a show at the Electric Piano Parlor tonight. And uh, we were looking for some folks to talk Cynical. to, and uh, and you guys are here. So here we are. How's it going, fellas? Hello, it's dude. Fine. Oh, good, good. Governor's over there, like I'm yeah. so long for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to seeing you without your plan. It's, uh, I know, it's a little long. I used to let the plan to be talking, but then I forget that I'm the one that can hear it in the voice. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk amongst yourselves. Oh, what up? So what's, oh. what's the thing like in the mobile? Have you guys recovered from this uh, pandemic? Uh, <laughs> so, it's, so. Um, it's, 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 I don't want to say that uh, we have because I'm not sure that that's the truth. Um, things are still pretty... Have you got um, some regular so. mics doing it? Like, cause the blind mule stopped, right? Yes, there's no uh, more comedy at the blind mule, but we do do open mic at... Uh, the box, and also we do music yeah, shows on those Thursdays. It's every Thursday night, but well, sometimes the Merry Widow. Thank you. Yeah, I can't. Which just blows my mind. So close. Yeah. I don't understand that at all. Um, yeah, like it was. <laughs> it just looked like someone's fucking kidding. Yeah, that was the whole thing. How long did that mic end up running? That mic ran. That mic long. ran from uh, the summer of 2014 what? until it was the summer of 2014. Because I know it started that summer. I started in October 2014. It started that summer, like May, June, July, something like that. And then it ended uh, March 2020. Oh, man. So well, it was, I mean, I don't know if you can count it, but it was going before that at the Alchemy. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well, but the, the uh, comedy whatever right. comedy was, whatever was right. going on for like eight or eight years, nine years. But right. the blind mule specifically it was. And then it sad. moved from the alchemy to the merry widow. Yeah. yeah, I miss those alchemy days. I wasn't around for that. That's where you uh, yeah. opened for Stanhope, right? Yeah, you, yeah. You, went, you guys were at that show. Were you at that show? I was at it. But I, I was, was on it too. He was nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. I think I peaked right there. It's been down here like that. I think that was my peak. I think I knew it at the time. I knew this. I'm not gonna lie, I feel the same way. <laughs> at the time, I remember thinking this is my peak, and I was right. But no, uh, we do the open mic at the uh, the the box, uh, the album music box. And I, I like it. Like, um, it, it it is hard to get audiences down that way. Um, most people, most foot traffic is usually on Dolphin Street. Um, it's, it's yeah, usually... It's, it's, off the, it's off the beaten path a little 
a little bit, yeah, and it, it's hard. So we try to put signs out and like direct people yeah. that way, and like every now and then I'll I'll go bark. Yeah. Every now and then, like when I feel like it, like I should yeah. do it every week. <laughs> like it's a, like it takes a lot out of me to just like talk <laughs> to random strangers like that. It does. It does. Like, but it seems to work. I can't. Just, I love how it's like, man, it takes so it's so hard to talk to random strangers like that. Then hand me a microphone. And it's like, I got it. <laughs> that's, that's different, and you know it. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. way different. Stand up is a lot easier without all that talking. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a <laughs> it's way easier to make seven people laugh than can go to to go convince thirty people to come see you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like they're already there. When on stage, yeah. like they, you have their attention, but when you're barking, you're trying to convince people like it's worth. Like you're trying to convince people like, hey, come sit down in a bar and listen to me talk, please. Mm-hmm. Like, and they're like, well, why don't you just talk to me now? Yeah, it? exactly. They'll be like, well, give me a pay money to hear me talk later. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I might not do well. <laughs> <laughs> I might be funnier now. <laughs> I I just, man. I just don't know what to tell people when they're just like, hey, well, if you want me to come see you do stand-up, give me a joke now. And I'm just like, well, the fuck? Like, come see me do jokes on the stage. Like, <laughs> that's what I'm asking you. Like, I'm not going to give you the jokes now. Like, yeah. what do you mean? So I have to figure out some, like, bullshit one-liner or whatever to just tell them. And I don't know. I just don't feel like it's a good representation of what's going to happen if they do come. Right to the stand-up show. So I really just don't like when people ask me that. Like, it's not like I'm going to be able to sell you on the show in that way now. <laughs> you have to come to the show. Also, I love when people come to open mic. Like, I've had this happen so many times. You're like, people have never been to a comedy show before. So they come to the open mic and then they all are like, oh, I thought it was going to be like, I thought everybody was going to be like Dave Chappelle. It's like, oh, you thought everybody in this room has been doing it for 35 years? That's what you expected? Open mic. Come on, son. You know, do you notice how you walked in free? <laughs> you got what you yeah. paid for. <laughs> like, it's a Thursday night. In the it, it's weird how people don't notice how they didn't pay for this. Yeah. Like, it's odd. To me, like they expect a lot of shit out of a free show. The level, the expectations. Yeah, it's like the open mic comedy is like going to a fifth grade basketball game. One kid's got talent, and everyone else yeah. is bumping heads and chugging Gatorade <laughs> yeah. and spilling it on their shirts. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that one kid decides how far you go. It's yeah, like, and that I mean, one kid's yeah. not even gonna play in college. He's, <laughs> he's, after his senior high school, he's done. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he's got to support a family now. Next time you see him, he's just going to be that sad guy at a bar who used to be something with your kids. Aww. <laughs> so what did happen to Marshall? <laughs> oh, saw him. dude. Saw him like that. We actually the said, yeah. Yeah. Show. We saw, we saw him. Are still alive? Yeah. Oh, man, but he, he's very confused. <laughs> I can, uh, he, no, no, not like, okay, like. What does that mean? No, it's like, it's just, you know the sign of, like, someone's brain is slipping, where it's, like, when, like, they're repeating themselves over and over again, or they ask a question that makes no sense to them, and you can just tell just the way they look, like, look, man, the the old man look of, like, going downhill is when the, your, your neck starts looking like a chicken's neck, yes. and, then, yeah, then, and then your shoulders start doing this all the way, and then you ask really confusing questions. I'm like, no, shit, you need a caretaker. I can tell. Yeah, I'm just being, a t- I was a caretaker. I know the signs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> person does speak from experience. Yeah. That's very true. Oh, I was in the London sun. Tells me that every time I see it. Well, shouts out to Marshall. It must have been a good vacation. Uh, <laughs> it, took, it took five minutes to explain to have him. Have you seen an old picture of him? He showed me an old picture. The guy looked just like uh, George Carlin. Yeah, he really did. When he was younger, he was like a spinning image of Carlin. So Carlin didn't juggle. Right. And he shows everybody that picture. Like yeah. Headshot. Yeah, that was like, that should have been a lookalike. 
joke about it. He printed out a newspaper article of him from like the 80s and mm-hmm. specifically wrote on it, To Carson and your kids love Marshall. <laughs> and it was just him like riding down the road juggling or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> and your kids. <laughs> oh, did, you, did you ever see you on the news? No, I didn't. Oh, man. I didn't did it look that. good? I didn't see it. Yeah, they yeah. probably found somebody better to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I heard the uh, the audio from the radio show uh, when I sat in for 1065, and uh, that sounded good. It was, okay. it was a lot of me having lofty opinions about bullshit that nobody really cares about. But yeah, it's yeah. talk radio for you. That's wanted to ask me about woke culture and everything and being canceled. It's like, well, here's a conglomerate of the opinions I like. Did you get canceled, dude? No. Oh. No. I told them, we were talking about it, and they were like, well, you know, what does it mean to be in the, you know, on the wire? And after, it came down to, if you have someone that has access to 100,000 fans that thinks I need to be canceled, fucking bring it on. I need that press. Yeah. (laughs) Like, you cannot cancel me right now. Because that's what I was about to say. Like, I don't get it being canceled exists the way people think it does. Yeah, I don't have anything to like, cancel. <laughs> you, can t- you can tell that people that don't actually like watch a lot of comedy, they like maybe watch one special a year. Any t- I get these, that question all the time. It's like, so like, is it like, obviously it's like harder to do stand-up now these days because like this, that, that. I was like, it's hard if you're not funny. Yeah, if I you're funny God, like, it, it's like I will say this shit the to the jo- fucking the, camera. The jokes that you're you talking can- about that cancel people were about a hardcore subject and had a bad punchline and so it just seemed like a, an opinion. Like, you know, and people took it weird, but it's like, if something's yeah. hilarious, you can hear the audience go like, holy shit, and then one person writes something yeah. that one person go fuck themselves. Like, if you, you can't be funny now, you were never funny. <laughs> That's what, yes. <laughs> hear that clip and I don't give a fuck. You were never funny. If, if you can't be funny without pissing people off, you were never funny. There. Now, who was that addressed to? Anyone, <laughs> any fucking body it didn't look like you that had is mad at like cancel culture. Like, if you're mad because you can't say the f word anymore, or you're mad because you can't like say you can't make jokes about like rape or some shit. You are not funny, and you are never no, funny. See, that's the thing. There. That's the thing. You, He's been aiming to get that you off his chest. Thank you. <laughs> you can make jokes about rape and it'd be funny. Yeah. I, have, yeah. I have a joke about rape that gets a letter done. He has a joke about rape that crushes every time. If you're the last man on earth, that, oh, that is one of my favorite <laughs> fucking bits. And the crowd laughs. You ever get messages on Facebook? How horrible is that joke? No. Like, you get what I'm saying? If, it's funny, it's, if it's funny, if it's funny, it's funny. And like, you know, I, I'll say this. I've never met a comedian who has ever written a joke and then it's like, oh, I'm really going to piss them off tonight. Yeah, that's right. Not, that's like, not why goal. is that the goal? Like, what's like, what's wrong with you? Laugh? Like, so yeah. it's uh, weird. People that do write jokes just piss people off never get past the open mic. No, no they, they, should, they should revamp Jackass for those people or something. Like, I don't know. Like, it's not. <laughs> yeah, we should have a mic for them, like just a mic, like the the, the piss off yeah, offensive well, mic. Like, like y'all can just this go. Is like worst cooks in America. Yeah, like, worst like, y'all can just, in just town. Hang out at that mic. Y'all be good. Piss off mic. <laughs> y'all can just entertain cis white male yeah. motherfuckers that want to hear that shit. And yeah. Dude, that's like, uh, what's the name of the restaurant? Is it is the name of the restaurant Dick's, where everybody is a dick? Oh, where all the waiters and everything? Like, make a comedy show, but make it like that. Dick's Yeah. Comedy. Yeah. That's all comedy. comedy. <laughs> Isn't there, like, a, a hot dog place in Atlanta called the Varsity, where they're just, like, rude as shit That's it. Chicago. There's a hot dog place in Chicago called, uh, fuck. Conan did a remote segment where they go there, and he brought the fucking dog... Oh yeah, yeah, it's like a street. Yeah, it's right. Right. Street. yeah, 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 yeah. But that's the thing, is they're gonna be mean to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We're, we're gonna say some offensive shit, and we're gonna fucking try to be funny and try to piss you off. Like, y'all can do that over there. <laughs> Dude. That's great. Everyone else can just do regular comedy. comedy My first thought is, likes. the people that do that, Mike, a lot, and then get booked on a show, 
You're going to walk in and accidentally piss off the wrong crowd. Yeah, it's going to be jarring. <laughs> it's going to be like, oh, wait, people have feelings and shit yeah. in the real world. <laughs> but I've been doing really what? good at the dick microphone. Yeah. Like, why am I not funny now? I should be able to say the (laughs) N-word. Why don't people think the N-word's funny? Yeah, man. I feel like a great show is supposed to be uh, entertaining more than it's supposed to be perfect. Everybody wants like a perfect, happy situation, but you could walk away from that and not remember a single thing. If something's interesting, it's like, wow, that was weird. Those three people were pissed. (laughs) That was kind of fun. (laughs) That got interesting. Uh, Entertainment, like, I don't know. Sometimes it's like when people want to kill all the time. It's like, you know, saying something that kind of gets silenced might be even cooler. Right. Because it, it changes the whole energy in the room. Because you're making people think. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, there's, people laugh. there's yeah. different kinds of silence. Like, there's yeah. silence, like, I didn't think that was funny. And there's silence, like, oh, you just said some shit. <laughs> you should, and there's I, silence, I mean, like, maybe you showed up this fucking shit. <laughs> yeah, there's that. <laughs> That's the worst kind of silence. There's different kinds of silence, you know? <laughs> Uh, Mark, Mark Barron had that quote that I love where he said the, the only thing that's sh- left the, the last thing that's shocking now in comedy is just when someone comes up and tr- says the truth Yeah. when someone goes and says you know what fuck this because of all this and we're like dang yeah. that's it yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's, why Bill, that's why Bill Burr is crushing it right now yeah. Bill Burr is crushing it tailor made yeah. for that yeah Yeah. It's, there's always a pain to them so when it swings towards the woke cancel culture it's always a comeback People like Bill Burr are just gonna fucking crush it on the way back. Mm. Yeah. So just yeah, chill. I'm just <laughs> you're gonna get just calm time. down. Yeah. I'm just having a problem with people thinking that like woke cancel culture or whatever is changing comedy. Like it is not. It really isn't. It's just you have to realize that the audience that you're catering to has feelings. <laughs> yeah. How about this? That's it. Like, that's all. Like, How about this? Cancel culture has always existed to the people that can be canceled. Right. Yes. And it's new to the people that didn't realize how dangerous what comedy you know, can be or how, you know, how, how difficult it can be. It's not like... Right? So it's new, to, it's new to the trolls. It's not new to the professionals. Yeah, it's not like if you, if you made a gay joke in the 90s gay people didn't hear it then right yeah. like they just didn't have a voice right. like that then. they didn't have a platform for yeah that. now they have a voice to to literally like on twitter or something say to you hey i didn't like that yeah and that's what people consider being canceled and that's why i'm saying it doesn't exist like people say it does like just because someone told you that they didn't like your joke doesn't mean that you're canceled right like People still will come to your shows or whatever. Right. Like, and I feel like people are just like blowing up the fact that like some people like had a voice and said like, hey, I didn't like that. So like, I can't... somebody can just tell you, hey, I didn't like that now and you have to deal with it. That's the consequences of saying, uh, hey, free speech. Right. That's what it is. <laughs> like, yeah. congratulations, you're participating. I also sometimes can't. I don't really? Know. Like, you yeah. want to throw me? Like, <laughs> you're doing it. I don't understand also when, when people get upset. Like, certain things, like, yeah, I can understand, but, like, sometimes, like, nowadays people just, like, love to just pull out the, the they were offended card yeah. over the littlest thing where it's like, you know, it's like, I look at it, it's like, I've gone to a restaurant and had bad service or waited too long to get this done. But I'm still never going, like, I need to talk to a manager and ruin this person's job instead of, like, you know what? This is life, and today wasn't my day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What about that? <coughs> what about moving on and letting things go? Like, you know? And that's oh, what I feel that's like. Both wild. of those things are true. Like, what I said and what you yeah. said are true. Like, that's how the world is. The people, are like, the people yeah. are like, I didn't have the best time I could have had, so I need to go out of my way to make sure someone gets in trouble. It's yeah. a weird <laughs> mindset to me. Yeah. Where it's like, damn, you obviously have no hobbies. Your hobby is making sure people have a bad day. I was going to say right. masturbating. <laughs> yeah. you know. Not valuable contributions to society. I've never once been like, I've never once in my life have I ever said the sentence, can I speak to a manager? 
And that is like the mindset of the modern world right now. No matter what happens, can I speak to the manager? Why don't you go fuck yourself? Like, I, just don't know that, I, Jesus. I just don't know what the manager is going to do for me that the person I'm, not, I'm talking to right now can't already. Right. Like, or like, I don't know what I'm looking for that the manager can do. Most likely, yeah, he's going to apologize to you, and both of them at the end of the ship are like, that was a dick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. The and manager's yeah. not going to change anything for me. Like, I'm not <laughs> Yeah. But that's interesting, though. When did the customer stop being right? Like, you know, for a long time, the customer was right. But now we've got Karens and, you know, people with dogs and purses asking for managers. So it's a You know. The customer got too comfortable. I'll yeah, say that. but it happened <laughs> recently because now we are very much on the side of mm, um, a lot of places aren't going to take shit, mm. and it's going to be exactly like you said. They're going to joke about it later on. Yeah, like, but it's like nowadays, like the customer is always right as long as I care about this job. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> How much am I getting paid? Yeah. Do you guys see McDonald's offering eighteen dollars an hour now? <clears throat> For yeah. a lot of though. Just oh, that's it? Yeah, because it's got like a little asterisk spot. Sneaky but, like, little dicks. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's it's so 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 sneaky little oh, dicks. Well, then you just quit and get to another McDonald's, right? Another there you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you just do all the, all the McDonald's. The whole thing. Thing. Dude, I got a goddamn Happy Meal from my kid one day, and literally the toy was like a fucking paper airplane. I was like, everything's ah, coming ah, down. Ah, 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 <laughs> Cracker Jack toys are better than that. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. Not the Happy Meal oh. toys. <laughs> Week. But that's that's an interesting thing that's been happening in the country, like people just shitting on and paying shit wages to you know fast food workers and all that, and then all of a sudden they're just like, oh, all right, I'm gonna just leave. I'm just not gonna do this job, and now there's just no fast food workers anymore, and then it's like, but 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 we need you. But we need people to make a... But wait! Like, <laughs> like I, I just love it. I love what's happening in the country right now. Oh, I... I like, oh, did you actually need these people? Did you? Well, yeah, oh, I see a point. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh. Didn't I think totally of that. I feel like in the future, like, more and more, you're going to see in, in inside dining at fast food places completely go away and everything's going to be specifically, specifically drive-thru. That's I don't know if it's going to take 10, 15, 20 years, but it's all going to turn into... Make the building smaller, put four people in it, one, and then only like one window. You order, you pick it up. And then like, because of COVID and everything, like they're kind of shifting that way anyway. So I totally think eventually like staffs are gonna get lowered. Technology's going up anyway, so more things are gonna be able to control themselves instead of a human being doing it. So like, yeah, fast foods are gonna become like way more smaller staffs, only drive through is my prediction. Of so as long as the solar staff is getting higher wages, I don't know if yeah. that's going to happen. They'll still find a way to fuck you. <laughs> Wait, oh, so they'll sure. still find a way to fuck you. <laughs> so if the machine is making my order, does that mean I'm actually going to get uh, no pickles on my quarter pounder when I ask for it? Okay. Dude, yeah. that's <laughs> like driving driving cars and everything. They keep showing up in the news like so and so's autopilot. Fuck, yeah. what's... Like, dude, still, their record is way better than ours. I would take driving cars, like autonomous vehicles over people. Any day of the week. Yeah, because it's always like a big news story when a car crashes or like a self driving car crashes. And I'm like, well, okay, how many human car accidents mm-hmm. happened that day mm-hmm. that you're talking about? Like, right. So you're talking about the one autonomous car crash versus, I'm sure, hundreds of yeah. human driving car accidents that happened that day. There was a woman ignoring. that died right outside of our apartment in the car wreck. Yeah, I, I didn't know about it until the next day. Like yeah. Two days later, I had yeah, no uh, idea. The <laughs> traffic circle at, uh, 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 what is it, Tunnel or Not Tunnel, but uh, the, the traffic circle. That's like right there. Somebody just like ramped it and yeah. <laughs> flipped and died. Oh, like, yeah. well, she was driving? She does? Yeah, yes. like 48 hours later, my friend Frankenstein it was like down the street. Frank Frankenstein? Yeah, that's his yeah, name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he plays bass. Yeah, he lives literally right on the corner, but he told me about it and I'm like, oh, really? He's like, yeah, you don't see all the shit in the road? I'm like, I didn't even know. No, bro, I, was, I was looking out this window <laughs> at it. Like, you could see it from this window and like all the, the emergency vehicles and shit were out there. Like, yeah. It was crazy. Uh, yeah. 
So she'd be in a self-driving car that she'd probably still be alive today. Yeah, I, absolutely. Definitely. She'd be breathing air today. Definitely. Frankenstein wouldn't have a story. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. That's the real tragedy. That's the real victim of this story. <laughs> this Frank- dealing Frankenstein's <laughs> life experiences, man. <laughs> He's alive! <laughs> <laughs> he could have been chilling that day. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of Frankenstein, what's going on with Shropshire? You guys just put a new video wow. out. I saw something about some hot dog yeah, stand yeah. action. Yeah, we did two videos in one day, then we released them a week apart. We just did a new music video for a song called Dark Matter 30 that yes. we just filmed last Sunday. That should be out in like a week. And so we're trying to at least one music video a month, but like this month it's gonna be like three. So nice. still working hard. Uh, actually, as soon as we're done with this podcast, I'm going over to Zeke's to try to record a new song with him and Philip. Um, nice. And so yeah, just anytime we have some free time, it's like trying to keep the train rolling, you know? Yeah. Because like uh, nowadays everyone is trying to do something in entertain everyone. What happened was everyone in the past ten years realized like, hey, anybody could be famous. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's like the goddamn market is like it's insane. Exactly. It's like it, oh, just in this neighborhood there's fifty people jamming away on their guitar and I trying swear, to get gigs. Like, Shouts out damn, to bro. Simone French who lives yes, exactly. right there. Yeah. Like you can hear them jamming all the time. Well like yeah. But it's like every, everyone's working to it. Well, you know, most people still talk and don't walk. Like, I see people, like, people that are in hip-hop groups and stuff are, are rappers, local rappers. All day, every day, when I just scroll the news feed on Facebook, I'll see people that I know that rap, they'll just be like, all these haters out here trying to stop my process. And I'm like, dude, you made one song this year. You are your hater. You are stopping yourself. What? Who are these haters? Name no them. one knows you. We've been friends for 10 years. I just figured out you rap because of this post about these haters. What are you talking about? It bothers me, dude. Mobile hip hop is, there is all these haters that don't exist surrounding us and stopping us from doing anything. It's so much easier to just post a cool photo of like new song coming out in nine years. Like, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? We should make a rap group called the Haters. Jesus. And just be the haters that people are talking about. <laughs> just, just tease one song for a whole year <laughs> yeah. and constantly trash other people. These haters don't exist. You know what it became? It became cool to have haters. Yeah. So now there's this weird mindset. It's like, oh, if I have haters, I'm cool. And it's like, why do people hate you? What did you do wrong? Maybe why is that cool? Like, it's yeah. weird. Do you address the it's hate in the weird. song? Like, From what angle? <laughs> why is people thinking negative, negatively about you mean that you're moving forward? Well, they don't think they're moving like, forward until they piss somebody off. Until they've got a hater. That's a sign that you and then it's like oh, now, yeah, now I'm on the right track. We got like, someone hates me. It's so like, just as a shout out, any rap groups out there need a hater, just hit me up. Yeah, I'm telling <laughs> you, let's be, let's be the haters. Like let's be the people that they're talking about. Like we can get promo just off the fact that people name drop us all the fucking time. But do like, we really <laughs> want to be the biggest supporters of hip hop and mobile? Like, uh, oh, was that harsh? Uh, Ooh. Dude, it, <laughs> just now got it. <laughs> Look, I like Sharp Track Collective because I'm in it. I like Honeycomb Brazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really, I don't so listen to a lot of local rap. Yours is you, yeah. you two, and Zeke. Yeah, Zeke Buckholz, Curtis Joyner, Philip Knott, Bill Goodman, yeah. Frankenstein. Frankenstein, yeah, dude. AKA Frankenstein. Julian Truxillo. His middle name is Truck? No, his, Tr- his last name is Truxillo. Oh. Yeah. Is that really how you pronounce it? T-U... That's what he pronounces it. He might be wrong. That's he pronounces it. T-R-U-X-I-L-L-O. T-R-U-X. I-L-L-O. Damn, I think it's actually Trujillo. Seems like the X would be a little silent. I don't know. He should sell tequila. That's all I'm saying. It's good. That's good. It is. Trujillo tequila. That's how I thought it was pronounced. I just never said it because I didn't want to 
So you guys got any haters? You got you... We have one hater. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, let's I was do gonna it. ask this. We have yeah. one hater. Okay, hang on. Before you tell this story, I want to tie this into what we were talking about earlier with cancel culture. Has anyone ever gotten an email? <laughs> you know what email I'm talking about. Like, I've never gotten an email from somebody that was pissed about something I said. No, I've got so, that, so. Keeping that question in mind, tell me about the, the dude. Oh, yeah, so I guess, he's a, I guess he's a local rapper. None of us had ever heard of him. He He's actually friends with my uh, first baby mama's first? Young, oh, younger okay. brother. I see where this is okay. coming There's from. There's a hip-hop talk for oh, my okay. first baby mama. So, right. oh, okay. uh, Very uh, ideal. So they're like, <laughs> funny. they're like, I guess know each other, but he basically like he saw our hot dogs music video, and first thing he did was hit the love button, nice. and then share it on his page and go, if you've been rapping for five years in Mobile and this video has more views than you, then you're fucking up, meaning it's he's saying it sucks. So I just commented back and said, hey man, thanks for watching! Exclamation point. And then all of a sudden, I could tell he didn't expect that because his next response was so nice. And like, oh, man, dude, let me tell you, man, your verse reminded me a lot of this group and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, don't pretend like your original post was going like, these dudes are lame. It's like, it's supposed to be funny on purpose. If you're laughing at it, thanks yeah. for getting it. <laughs> Do you really think we're wearing a hot dog costume and a ketchup bottle costume because we're taking ourselves yeah. seriously? Oh. Yeah. It's, it's, we love hip hop, we love comedy, let's incorporate the two, but for someone to be like, uh, this is ridiculous, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> Your rap name should be Sherlock because you're the smartest fucking detective I've ever met. Like, what the fuck? Like, well, do you have a Watson? Are you taking applicants? <laughs> if you think it sucks, that's fine, but to be like, man, this is like, you know, just the way he ended, like, this is a joke. This ain't real hip hop. Like, no. no. Like, we know. Dude. <laughs> we're aware. Thanks for real hip hop. Who's standing, who's standing on the street corner in a hot dog outfit going, put some respect on my yeah. head. Yeah. <laughs> I want respect in the form of mustard, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. But, but. not nah, like, y'all were going back and forth with that dude. I wasn't. I told everybody to leave it alone. And they're like, no, nah, man. And I was like, dude. <laughs> Lean into it. Lean into it. It's good press. It's good press. Yeah, man. Steal his fans. Fuck it. it. I don't know. The whole thing was ridiculous. Like I I say fuck it. Well you just gotta play (laughs) it from the ridiculous angle and just make him say stupid shit. Like don't say anything mean or offensive and just make him say stupid. Our video was ridiculous. His comment was ridiculous. The retaliation from my friends was ridiculous. And so this one went, what? Yeah, man. Hey man, you're this close to having to send a dick pic. Like, just yeah. you know. <laughs> a dick, a dick dressed as a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> one point, everybody was like, "Let's write a diss song about him." I was like, "Dude, I do not care no, enough no, about. No, 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 I don't no, care no, much. No, no, no. I you want the press? Don't give him the no, press. Yeah, I was like, I don't care enough about anybody. Like, I'm gonna waste my time going like, man, this guy I don't know. I'm gonna write some lyrics about him. Like, what the no, fuck? That's too much. That's ridiculous. I never got diss songs in the first, like, whenever I thought of, like, diss songs and rap, it kind of seems like this rapper and this rapper meet up, it's like, how can we make more money? It's like, let's hate each other on, and pretend, like. Yeah, that, that really gets you, like. Yeah, they're, they're both in on it, right? It's yeah, like, it's, yeah. It's like a wrestling, it's K-Pow. Right? Well, and, until K-Pow. they, like, K-Pow. shoot K-Pow. each K-Pow. other and they die and shit, I think they weren't in on it. Right. Like, he, someone was in on it. It goes without a hand at that point. Someone realized, hey, I can make money off these two dudes hating each other. Yeah, it's just the whole thing. It might not be them, but somebody. I think that's Logan and Jake Paul's entire formula. Yeah. I think we can get somebody to be mad. Jake Paul knows people want to see him get knocked out. Dude, when Mayweather's boy fucked him up, I laughed so hard. Is it Mayweather that he's fighting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he was in a face out, and dude, he grabbed his hat, and (laughs) his bodyguard fucking... But that was K-Fat, too, right? No. No, he thought he was being funny. No, because you could tell because it wasn't it wasn't uh, Mayweather that got worked up about it. It was his bodyguard. Um, And when he may not be there. Yeah, when that dude goes to swing, (laughs) mm, he means it. (laughs) We're not (laughs) kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, dude, he had a he had a black eye and uh, he got he got fucked up. Mm. 
Uh, it's like, I'm, I don't know, everything, everything is getting extra, and I'll use the word fake, is the only one I can think of right now, but to the point that's like, it used to be on the internet, viral videos were people capturing something that was just in the moment, and that's mm. what made it funny. Someone just happened to slip and fall. This crazy thing just happened to happen while right. I it. Now, tons of viral videos you can tell are pre-planned, right. scripted, to make it seem like an accident, yeah. and everyone shares and goes, oh my god, da 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 and I was like, dude, it's like, how how did the name of the game become lying? Why I can is tell that you, the I name? know, Why I know where, I know where. The name of the game because now? Like, if ridiculous. you take if you take certain courses in college, one of the assignments is to create a viral video. Right. Like so it's ridiculous. yeah, like you can wow. get college credit for learning how yeah, to you do that. Tell them. I mean, why are you standing there videoing this empty street? And then somebody falls over it, you know. Yeah. Not, yeah. If you ask yourself, why were you filming that in the first? It's crazy how many people fall for it. Like you read the comments on certain things, like, "Oh my god, that was crazy that, that happened." And then one person's like, "Dude, that was you can't tell that's in reverse or like whatever." Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's just like, dude, what is happening? Yeah, that's why it picks up, or like that's why it's successful because humans are stupid and they like to see <laughs> people fall down or right. fart or like Shot some Freud. bullshit. Like, yeah, like. That's what people like to see. Well, yeah, it's like people are so uh, people are so concerned about. It's like a, a, in Monsters Inc. how they fuel all the energy by uh, screams yeah. and then yeah. it turns into laughter. It's like that. It's like people are so willing to like uh, like entertainment. That's a lie. Is more important than like. Mm. Any version of the truth is just kind of like, man, yeah, we get it. You fucking care. It's like it's uh, stupid. It's stupid to care now for some reason. I'll say this: there's these two um, British rappers called Pete and Bass, and there's these two old white dudes, like they're British, yeah, and they fuck do old white British dudes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I hate them. Hate them. But, <laughs> no. Glad you're here, younger. But, uh, <laughs> they do like drill music. In Britain, like they, they, you know, it's it's you know, a mainly uh you know black young like gang culture kind of uh genre, and they're really good at it. They rap or whatever, but the co- conversation around them is like, do they actually write their lyrics? Like, are they actual rappers? And I think it's to the point now where it's like, I don't, nobody cares mm-hmm. anymore, really. <laughs> like nobody really cares if they're writing their shit or whatever. It's just fun. It's just entertaining. And I think that's kind of how like meme culture, like viral videos are now. Like nobody gives a fuck. If it's original. Yeah. Well, the the entertainment value that you get out of it is so minuscule that nobody cares. Because you're going to see that video less than five seconds. You're going to laugh and you're going to keep on going and you're never going to care again. You know? So whether it's real or not, it's five seconds worth of me giggling. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to look at it. Like, I don't care that much. I'm not following like, up. I got my laugh. I'm moving on. <laughs> there's, I'm following up there's on that. so much information on There's so much things to choose from that, like, you know, when I was a kid, if someone showed me a great magic trick, like a card trick, I'd be mind blown. If I'm walking down the street now, so I'm like, you want to see a card trick? He's like, I fucking, I know it. It's a fucking... <laughs> Dead blade, God. fuck off. You have the thing. You're, you're not the devil. Like, oh, yeah. I got it. <laughs> if the devil wants to show me a trick, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, like, Are you Chris Angel? I don't care. I didn't care about him either. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But dude. that's kind of like, coming back to... Like, so kind of singing lips of an angel like every episode I fucking hated this angel coming back to comedy that that kind of hurts that mentality kind of hurts up and coming comedy though mm-hmm. because people are so used to like seeing their favorite comedian or like the, the next big thing on Netflix or whatever so like no one's really trying to go out and see you yeah. know open mic or go out and see you know somebody trying somebody like building their shit or like getting good like like they want to see the shit like they want to see yeah. like are you perfect yet <laughs> like mm-hmm. when you, call me when you're perfect like because I can see perfect on Netflix tonight right. instead mm-hmm. of going out and seeing you try well, that's always been like, the case even with bands and stuff you can watch yeah. it yeah yeah it's like you know uh, you can invite people to come see your band in a garage and then they'll never come, but then as soon as you're Led Zeppelin, they're like, man, I knew those guys back in the day. With like, Oh my god, I cannot wait. You didn't even show up. Like. I cannot wait till I'm famous. Or like, if it ever happens, I cannot wait till I'm famous to have like people show up and be like, oh man, I remember when I saw you 
at the Blonde Yule one time because I just happened to be there. Like, yeah, you were not a supporter. You were not, <laughs> you, like, you, no. Dude, like, weird reference, but uh, I don't know how big a Jimmy Buffett fan anybody here is, but he's got a song that uh, I heard I was back in town. Based on a true story, he came back to Mobile, showed up at a gas station, filled up his truck, walks in, dude's like, hey man, did you hear Jimmy Buffett's in town this weekend? Yeah. Oh, fuck. My hometown. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Wow. Like it. That's what fame will get you. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's like. People my age or even like older than me, it's like, I grew up, I love history. And when I get into something, I want to know beginning to end. I love movies. Older movies, newer movies. I love comedy. I want to know who were the guys in the 40s, who are the guys that are new now. Like, I love all of it. But it's so weird when like you meet someone who's like the same age as me. I could name a name that everyone should know, and they're like, "Who's that?" It's like you, you know, Animal House. Is that like a kids movie? Oh my god, you don't know <laughs> Animal House? Like just random things. It's like I hate. I don't know why this is my set, and it's probably always been this way. I'm only been on the planet for my timeline, but like, uh, if something is like ten years ago, it's old now. Yeah. And I'm ancient. like, wait, so how old are you? 25? Are you young? Yeah. When did it come out? 10 years ago. That's old? Yeah, that's old. So you must be ancient then. <laughs> like, what the fuck? How is that old? Like, Your brain just finished developing. And people Stop. think if something's old, that means it sucks. I hate that stigmatism. Oh, yeah. So there's black and white movies from the 40s. And I'm like, dude, life lessons in this. This is a deep movie about relationships, yeah. war, the whole thing. They're like, oh, it's old. Violins, fuck that. I don't want to hear classical music. Jesus Christ. I'm trying to hear that wow. Yeah, I'm trying to hear a bass drum pump on repeat as I shop for jeans at Old Navy. Fuck. Wow, Old Navy, man. Oh, really? <laughs> Every fucking clothing store has the worst soundtrack. What did Old Navy do to you? <laughs> Nothing, dude. They just selling khakis. They just dude. pumped nonsense in my fucking eardrums as I need a new backpack for school. Like, I'm trying to get <laughs> you had a backpack from Old Navy? Yeah, they're good backpacks. Right. I blame you. <laughs> and then he comes around to defend him. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Hang on, a lot. Fucking soundtrack. <laughs> that awful, dude. Like, Let's take a Mumford and Son song and make it a club beat. Oh like, god. Why would you? Oh god, no. It's like mm. where white people take hip hop songs and make like a ukulele cover of it and put it on YouTube. And I'm just so like, why, and I'm why are you killing me? Oh, <laughs> I'm tired of this new, I hate the new apology world we live in too. Like, if, even some of like our favorite comedians, you'll hear them on their podcast and they'll say something like that. And be like, but you know, if you're a fan of Mumford and Sons, I'm not saying, I'm saying everything uh, about all of y'all. Yeah. I hate Mumford and Sons. And oh, if you God. like them, get Damn. out. <laughs> I mean, watch the podcast. I think don't, don't take my word for it. I think, I think that's why Marin is going to survive the the longest with his integrity because he is the one person that has re- remained unabashed in in his opinions. Uh, I think I think Rogan's starting to kowtow a little bit to the pressures because mm-hmm. he's making the news a lot. No, yeah, he's he's big though. He it's there's a lot of eyes on Rogan. He's oh yeah, fun. responsibility. Yeah. Like it happens. I get it. It's just as things shape the. Podcasting used to be anybody can say any, anything they want, anytime. Right. And slowly but surely, there, there's this censorship that's coming in. It's not necessarily from the FCC, but... But just, like, you just don't want to deal weird. with it. Like, no, it's a pain in the ass. Because that's, that's why I'm saying cancel culture doesn't exist the way people think it does. Yeah, you, give me your take on this. I put mine out there the other day. You can say whatever you want. Yeah. You can. Yeah. You You can. Yeah, say it, hey, Young <laughs> podcaster, young comedian watching. You can. You can do it. Mm-hmm. But you have to be willing to deal with the fact that it comes with consequences. Well, right. Everyone else can also say whatever they want. And I feel like what people call censorship is them dealing with people having a problem with the yeah. thing they said. Accountability. It's not like the government is coming and saying, we're shutting you down, Rogan. <laughs> like, you yeah. can't say, like, that's not happening. Right. When, it's just... But when Rogan signs a deal with Spotify for millions of dollars for his podcast, when he gets cancelled, it's not just him. It's, it's the company who paid him millions of dollars now isn't getting their money's worth. 
Yeah. I, well, I don't think, I think it's a different angle than that. I think Rogan is just mindful of the, of how much attention he gets. And so he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to be inaccurate so he can be misrepresented. Right. But it's, you, you can hear it as a public speaker, you know, having, having studied it before I ever got into comedy, you can hear a different intent in, and it's like the difference between him talking, like when you hear him talking to Alex and the old interview versus the one where he's fact checking him all the time. Yeah. But anyway, we'll have to go. But no, like, like, right nowadays, right. like all my favorite artists, like my favorite version of comedy or confidence is not in the uh, uh, knowing you're right or admitting you're wrong. It's uh, knowing that most likely none of it matters. The dress on neck approach doesn't. Yeah. It's like yeah. why? I just like. Because Jesse doesn't get canceled. Because, yeah, but it's like, because people listen to him knowing what who he is. Exactly. Like, he knows what he gets. Like, right. he's aware of what's going and on. He's like, funny. Yeah. He is funny. So. Mm-hmm. But just the, nobody gets offended at that head because they know who he is. Right. So if you go to a comedy show and you get offended, that's your fault for your lack of research. Yeah. You, you shouldn't have gone to somebody yeah. that's going to offend you. You shouldn't have left your house if you're that sensitive. <laughs> yeah. right? But do come to like, a comedy should... show tonight. Yeah, please, please come to comedy shows, but at the same time, don't be a dick at comedy shows. Yeah, just don't be a dick in general. That's pretty yeah. good. Life. It's a good rule. It's, it's a, a good, good rule. rule. Don't be a dick in front of me. Be a dick somewhere else. So don't make me do it. <laughs> yeah, don't make me be Leave the being a dick to us. That's what I. Yeah. I think that's kind of where the culture is at right now. Like, everybody can see people being dicks on Facebook. Everybody's just like, uh, I can do it. Really? But do I have to get involved? I don't. Anyway. We know some comedians like that. That it seems like they just saw other people being comedians. It's like, well, I want to be an unlikable person as well. And it's like, well, no, there's uh, an art yeah. to what we're doing. Like, it's not just being an asshole. Like, you don't really get it the way you think you do. Like I, I see a lot of comedians like that. Well, this is the the I think Carson was was talking about this one time when we were on the road. Uh, the luxury of the feature spot, oh. and how it's the sweet spot because everybody's there to see the headliner, but you get to stretch out in front of a warmed up crowd. Right. So it's the best of both worlds because you've got all of the hype crowd. Uh, and none of the headliner responsibility. Is <laughs> <laughs> how you put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. And yeah. so young comics have no idea what it is, what that responsibility of a headliner is. Yeah. Yeah. Now the middle, the middle is fucking. Yeah, it's the sweetest spot on the planet. <laughs> anytime, anytime I'm middle, I'm like, no one cares about me. Crowd's hot right now because these two people already went up before me. It's like, and I get, I get 15, 20 minutes to just do whatever. It's like, this is great. Yeah. And then, yeah, once you're the headliner, and you get like 20 minutes into that 45-minute set or whatever, you're like, ooh. They don't seem like they care right now. <laughs> might, have to, might have to take my clothes or push it a little forward. That's how I start screaming at people, man. Like, I've, I've headlined maybe like uh, the amount of times I can like count on my hand. I'll get halfway or so into a headline set and just start like screaming at people. <laughs> like, <laughs> just how I keep the energy up, man. It's just like I don't know. It's so like I'm not used to headlining, man. Like uh, headlining so much fun though, because you can figure out so much more space as far as where your jokes can go. Because like yeah, you can lay shit out. You have way more time to improv. Like when you only have when you're booked for five to ten minutes, you're usually gonna spit off the jokes for a bathroom. But when you have like that time, you're like I can do all my jokes about porn now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once somewhere in the middle of that, you're gonna say nine sentences you've never said before. And like shit's really gonna you're gonna John Coltrane it a little bit. Like, yeah. You can actually you can actually play the whole scale and just basically like when you're okay when you're a headliner you can play full jazz scales when you're doing five to ten minutes you better hit that solo to Sweet Home Alabama perfect. <laughs> that was not be never <laughs> like, that was very true. Very very true. Every time I get on VR chat and I say that I'm from Alabama, they oh Sweet Home. Like oh. no matter where they're from, they always say oh like that's all we know about Alabama. You know, they, like, they, Sweet home and racism. That's what right. they know. <sighs> well, you know, brand loyalty. South's had it for a while. 
What are you gonna do? I hate that song. I think it's pretty cool. I get a shout out. They love me in Birmingham, apparently. <laughs> So cheap. <laughs> so cheap. God, uh, yeah. It was cheap, but it was good. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like I hate how Alabama fans got me. I've been to so many fucking games in my life as a kid. And uh even as a kid, nothing was more annoying than when everyone takes those goddamn pom poms. And as soon as uh like they do the sweep at home out there. Roll Tide Roll. I'm like, oh, y'all added lyrics yeah. mm-hmm. to a song about us from a band from a different state. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> fucking, the whole thing's weird. Uh, it's, it, but that's, you know, Alabama hanging out 10 years ago. That's what we do. Uh, that- you know what's funny? I love how they have the line, and I hope Neil Young will remember, and he did, and they died. <laughs> <laughs> he did remember. He yeah. still remembers. Yeah, that was, that was quite the blessing they gave Neil. <laughs> did you go to University of Alabama? I did. I did. I spent two years yelling "Go Pachyderms" every time someone said <laughs> "Roll Tide." Yeah, yeah. Because fuck it, if you don't know a pachyderm is an elephant and an elephant's a mascot, you don't belong here. <laughs> nice. yeah. Damn, dude. It was annoying. It was very, very annoying. No one knows that. No one. No one that is like a huge Alabama fan is aware of the fact that the mis- the mascot is an elephant. No, like unless, no one just calls it an elephant. Unless <laughs> Al is standing there, it's yeah, not like, it's yeah. not even a part of the zeitgeist. Like he only exists in this weird little wherever he is. It's like a when they phenomenon. when they call it the Crimson Tide, like do people know what Crimson Tide is? Like, do people know what Crimson Tide means? I yeah, it's that movie that did so Washington did. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. It was, a good, no, it was like a sport. It was a, their radio announcer in like the 30s or 40s, and he, they were all running out on the field in their red uniforms, and he said, looks like a Crimson Tide. Yeah, but Crimson and Tide is a thing. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, but I, I don't feel like the people that call the Alabama team the Crimson Tide knows what that guy was referencing when he said Crimson Tide. Well, yeah, and now, now it's, it's a real fine line between Crimson Tide and Red Tide, and one of those things yeah. is a flesh-eating bacteria. Yeah. Like, how closely do we need to be associated with the horrors of nature? I'm just saying. Like, I don't know. It, uh, it's, I'm, I'm just saying that I think people are generally stupid. I don't get mass fine. tribalism. I do not understand mass tribalism. Especially if it's something that you don't participate in. Like, you're going to be an Uber fan that never played football, like, never played on a team for that university, never went to school there. Like, what... What do you need? What hole are you trying oh, to fill? Dude, when Philip when Philip and Zeke went to Alabama and we were, they were, we were like eighteen, and I wanted I was gonna move up there with them. I just went up there to visit for like a weekend, and I, I met this one kid that was going there. Like they were all like freshmen, and he was uh he was from New York City, and I was like, what made you come down to uh, Tuscaloosa for college? He was like, because it's Alabama, baby, number one. Roll Tide, what up? And it was like literally just because of the football team was number one. He was like, that's where I'm going to college. You playing, dude? No, he's not going. He was, he he had a bottle of Captain Morgan's in his hand and a backwards hat. Like, he wasn't doing anything. Wow. (laughs) That kid just wanted to be on a winning team. I hated that city, dude. I went to Tuscaloosa. Uh, My grandfather played for Alabama. Doesn't matter. Good for him. Fuck that city. I fucking hated that town. It was literally nothing but 18-year-old kids fighting, backwards hat, yelling with drinks in the air, and then going like, no, I can get some blow. <laughs> God, damn, dude, this town sucks. Are y'all really going to be my doctor when I'm sick in the future? That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You better not need a lawyer. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Yeah. I, oh, world. I got, I got stories. Tuscaloosa is a weird place. It is. Run an open mic there every Monday night now. So I've been spending a lot of time there. So you know where to get the blow? Yeah. 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 It's in a brewery. So, you know, we got a hookup. Yeah, we got a hookup. Oh, yeah. Dude. 
Man, we've been at this an hour, fellas. This has oh, been, been fun. An hour? Damn, that was yeah. fast. Yeah. yeah. What? Fifty-four minutes minus the three secret minutes that you can only see on the live stream. God, yeah. secret yeah. minutes. Secret minutes. Yeah, well, secret minutes. By secret minutes, I mean I forgot to press the button. Well, I'll <laughs> say uh, if you're watching, come out to the open mic. It's uh, every Thursday at the Alabama Music Box. We're not actually this upset about life. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> no, we're actually, but more things piss me off than make me happy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is, we're actually happy people for the most part. There's a fucking kitten in there. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got a kitty. What's up? Shout out to Mojo. Yeah, Mojo, <laughs> Mojo Jojo over there. To all you haters. Yeah. Oh, shout out to hey, Mojo. Let's be honest. This is a much better version of pussy for you to be fucking with. Right? Yeah. It's much safer. <laughs> safer. <laughs> Less danger. Less expensive. <laughs> yeah. Be careful, Mojo. That's all I'm saying. That sounded horrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was too far. The first one was good. Yeah, the first one was good. The second one was too far. That's what open mics for. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's, I'm a free speech. Yeah. <laughs> Bullshit, you were on my podcast. He's a <laughs> bunch of, bunch of goddamn haters. <laughs> 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 I thought you were about to say, like, I refuse. Jeez. Like, I'm not <laughs> going. <laughs> Just let the, let the man rap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Seth, hit up uh, Governor. Uh, check that's out so Shropshire. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love if you get the message you just no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is a reason. You've been hating on me for too long. <laughs> Wait, I didn't tell you I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> specifically rebook those places oh just so they're like hey man he's like don't fucking act like you love me now uh, don't hate man me <laughs> <coughs> yeah man haters gonna hate they gotta have they gotta have something to love is gonna love I don't really want none of the above I wanna piss on you if I do I wanna piss on you Right. Try, try, everybody. <laughs> we'll be covering all the Chappelle yeah. Show classics. <laughs> all the <laughs> show. Yeah, just do, all the, dude, that'd be a cool band that just covers. Wait till you hear the, all two, the, songs the two Two Pies Still, still Alive, alive <laughs> song. <laughs> that must be doo doo. <laughs> uh, too funny. Uh, oh, and also R.I.P. Um, goddamn. Moody. There you go. Okay. Moody. Wants to call me, man. Yeah. The girl. Dude. The blackest man in existence. Yeah. The the most black. <laughs> the most black. Um. Let's see. Other plugs. Uh, if you're in Mobile, grab ticket tickets for uh, Sean Patton. Yeah. It's gonna be at the Alabama Music Box on June twentieth. Yeah. Um. Jenny Zagrino. Is going to be in town, I think, uh, maybe next weekend, May 27th, or no. She's going to be in town soon. Uh, check out Music Box or Zeke's page um, at Mobile Comedy Festival. It's on there as well. It's also on the Zaley City Comedy. It's it's everywhere. Also the Mobile Comedy Festival. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your applications in. you got a couple of days left um, before they get expensive. And uh, let's see. What else is going on? I think uh, we've got, oh, the uh, next weekend, we've got the Interstate Showdown at the Electric Piano Parlor. 
Um, you're going on that show. Um, I forget who else is on that one. Zeke's on that one. A couple of people, a bunch of people from three different states. It's going to be fun. Uh, and tonight at the Electric Piano Parlor, we got J.F. Harris is running a set before he records it for Bill Burr. So nice. come check it out. Did I miss anything? That's tonight at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Electric. And open mic every week, Thursday, Music Box or Mary Widow. Uh, yeah, check out Azalea City Comedy. Check out Governor. Follow me. Um, follow these guys at Shropshire, Chasmodius, Whippersnapper, and why well, I forget um, your handle. Ryan Adams Comedy on everything. There, there you go. Bunch of Todd Berry is going to be at the day. Todd Berry? Oh, it's right. It's right. Todd Berry is going to oh. be at the fucking Mobile Comedy Festival. Yeah, Todd Berry is going to be there. Uh, Sean Finnerty is going to be there. Yeah, nice. We're going to have He's Stone versus Drunk versus Sober. We're going to have the bartender shows coming back. Um and I know I'm missing missing something there. I think we talked about replacing the founder show with something else. So more details on that soon. We're gonna try and find a way to do another fun show instead of something. So shout out to Chris Catan. What up, dog? Zeke's car, dude. And on that note, I did my job. Later. Nice. See you next time.